He expressed in confidence in the economy. Grand Bahamas' new police chief wants closer ties with the community and the family of a murder victim calling for an end to violent crime. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, the private sector continued to show faith in the Grand Bahama economy as another business is in the process of expanding. Tonight, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama says it is a positive sign for the local economy. The Minister of State for Grand Bahama, Senator the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, commending leaders of the Omni Financial Group Limited for their decision to expand their services on Grand Bahama. He says that this shows the private sector is confident in the local economy. We are happy that uh, the business is expanding. We are happy that the business sees confidence in the economy of Grand Bahama. And we are also happy that they will be hiring uh, some new employees to man those uh, two uh, locations. Director Omni, Harvey Morris, says that they have been in the community since 2006 and he believes that now is the right time to expand. Omni is a company that likes to speak of things that are happening. Uh, the two locations, construction starts next week. Um, with both locations operational uh, before the end of February. One immediately and the other one shortly thereafter um, and we are actually looking at other opportunities here. Some 10 persons are expected to be hired and Morris says that he is excited to have them join the Omni family in the new locations. We have an existing relationship with the Abaco Market Group. Um, we are currently in their location in Nassau so those first two locations will be in the Abaco Market stores. One of the things I like to say about our hiring, Omni has never laid off a staff member. We've never downsized, we've never um, placed person on, on reduced work hours, um, and I think we, we, we treat our employees well. And so these new employees coming on board will join the Omni family and get similar treatment. Morris says the plan for Omni is to open even more locations in the future. Grand Bahamas' new police chief looking to build a stronger partnership with the community. The new officer in charge was officially introduced last week during an official handing over ceremony at the Gerald Bartlett Police Headquarters. Kimberly Mullings reports. We are one. You have an obligation to assist. We have an obligation to execute the law. ACP Samuel Butler notes that it is important for the police to have a working relationship with the community. He wants the support of the public and officers as he begins his journey as officer in charge of the Northern Bahamas. We certainly will go after the small infractions and thereby diminish those things that can easily grow on us. As I had the opportunity for the last two days to meet some of the stakeholders and who embraced me warmly, uh, I want you to know today I'm echoing, I heard you loud and clear. He says he understands the concerns of stakeholders throughout the Northern Bahamas and has pledged that the Royal Bahamas Police Force will work with them to tackle vexing issues in the community, but he notes that there are a number of offenses that they are looking into immediately, ranging from traffic to more serious crimes. Please to the wider community, in particular those who have not fully obeyed the law as it relates to license vehicle or collecting your license plate, we ask that you please do so as soon as possible. There were some environmental concerns, we certainly will go after those. Certainly, we will feel each other in positive ways and definitely uh, more serious crime. All in all, ACP Butler is excited to get acquainted with the Northern Bahamas. I look forward to working with you as a community, and I'm certainly in the days ahead, we'll get to know each other in a more intimate way. I'm pleased to be here. 
Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. A Grand Bahama family is in mourning after their loved one was taken away by a violent act of crime. Tonight, Sabrina Brown tells us that they are calling for an end to the senseless killings in the country. Please stop killing one another, stop killing us. That passionate appeal coming from Sandra D. Hanfield, whose brother, 54-year-old Derek Calvin Cartwright, was brutally murdered in New Providence on January 18th. Derek was born on Grand Bahama and grew up in the settlement of Eight Mile Rock. He relocated to New Providence and was an employee of a pharmacy there. Sandra D. shares fond memories of her brother. He really couldn't hurt a bone on anyone's body. He was always helpful and willing to help people. Um, just a very um, sad, sad um, moment for our family because um, we're still in disbelief that he is gone. If I don't understand something, especially with the Bible, he's the person that I always call and he would explain because he just knew that word. While the family is heartbroken, she says they are not unforgiving. I really forgive you, you know, because we have to forgive. But I like to say to you, turn in yourself, you know, and, and let the Lord take his course and put down the guns and the weapons and pick up the word of God and the Bible. We've been having too many um, crime within the year, too many murders. And when you kill that person, you're not just killing that one person, but you're killing the entire family because that loved one have people that love them. They might have spouses, they might have children. She's appealing to anyone with information about Derek's murder to contact the police. They need your help. Let them know you might think the information is not important, but to the police, that might be the link what they need. So I like to say, please, I appeal to you, go in and, and speak with the police. If you don't want to be known, just call them and let them know what you, you know. Derek is also the brother of the Premier of the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Honorable Charlene Cartwright Robinson. He will be laid to rest on Saturday, February 10th at St. David's Methodist Church in Eight Mile Rock. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. The Barry and Sheena Johnson murder trial continuing today in the Supreme Court. During the morning session, the chief investigating officer returned to the stand. Italia Hall was there. Attorney Jeffrey Farkerson, who is representing defendant Paul Belazare, began the session with a cross-examination of Sergeant 772 Lorenzo Johnson. Farkerson told Johnson that he's hoping to wrap up with him soon, but he has a few outstanding matters that he wants to clarify. Farkerson then asks Johnson about the position of Barry Johnson's truck that was found through a dirt road. From there, the attorney asks Johnson if the defendants told him that they were going to the home of Barry and Gina Johnson for $2 million and cocaine. Sergeant Johnson said that they just mentioned money and drugs. Farkerson then asks Johnson if he asked the accused men how much money they were looking for. Sergeant Johnson responded by saying he gave them an opportunity to say what they wanted to say. Attorney Carlson Sherlin, who's representing defendant Kevin Dames, then intervened and requested that the term they not be used. Prosecutor Neil Brathwaite agreed and told Justice Estelle Gray Evans that Attorney Farkerson should be more specific with his questions. From there, Farkerson continued his cross-examination. He asked Sergeant Johnson if he knew that the getaway vehicle is the most important thing in an armed robbery. Johnson said that he disagreed. Farkerson then proceeded to ask another question, but was interrupted by Prosecutor Neil Brathwaite, who raised a question of relevance. Attorney Farkerson then moved on and inquired if Sergeant Johnson had asked any of the suspects if they were going to conduct a home invasion and would they wait for the homeowners to leave. Sergeant Johnson said that that is a dumb question to ask. Attorney Farkerson countered by saying that it would be dumb not to ask that question. One of Attorney Farkerson's final topics for the morning session was the position of the security cameras around the home of Barry and Sheena Johnson. Farkerson asked Sergeant Johnson if he checked the cameras to see the route that the accused man took to gain entry to the home. Johnson said that the cameras did not show their route. The video was then played in the court showing three persons standing over a man who was lying on the ground in front of a door. Paul Belazare, Devon Hall, and Kevin Dames are all accused of two counts of murder. 
one count of armed robbery, and robbing the victims of their car keys in their GMC truck, valued at over $8,000. The morning session came to an end shortly after 12 noon. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Natalia Hall. Now to news from Abaco, where a man was hauled before the court today in connection with the fire that destroyed several homes in the Haitian community of the Mud on Sunday morning. 42-year-old Aubrey Alfred of the Mud was arraigned before Magistrate Ancilla Evans at the Magistrate Court in Marsh Harbor, Abaco, on 10 counts of arson. He was not required to enter a plea, and the matter was adjourned to March 15, 2018 for trial. Now that fire left some 170 persons homeless. Since then, they have been living in the Mount Olive Church of God in Marsh Harbor. Stay with us. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues in just a moment.